Candemonium, a BNM hyper coaster that opened in the summer of 2020, is one of, if not the best, BNM hyper coasters out there. Being the main attraction of Hershey Park's New Chocolate Town, this coaster was a perfect fit for Hershey Park when it opened in July of 2020. It delivers so well on the things BNM hypers do great, such as the fantastic airtime, graceful feeling, and this thing is a super smooth ride experience. All of that, I will of course get to later in the video, but most importantly, before we start, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos on Coasters Often, as it really helps the channel out tremendously. Also, if you want to see more, make sure to follow my Instagram for updates and much more, but now that that's out of the way, let's jump in to this review. First off, let's start with these stats, as Candemonium is 210 feet tall, 76 miles per hour, it has no inversions, and the track length is 4,636 feet long. For a hyper coaster, the stats may not be the best, but let me tell you, the same with the newer BNM hypers, the stats do not matter at all. Mako and of course Candy are perfect examples of this, especially Mako since it is only 200 feet tall and a lot of people who have ridden it claim it to be one of if not their favorite BNM hypers that they have ridden. Really when you think about it, BNM has gotten so much better with their latest hyper creations. Their past three are these two and Shambhala which are mainly considered the three best BNM hyper coasters. Sure, you could argue that some rides such as Diamondback or Goliath are better, but overall, this just shows you in how much BNM has improved over the years. One of my biggest controversial opinions of this ride is that I personally think that Candemonium is better than, you guessed it, Mako, and that is for a great reason. That is, the Candemonium does everything as good as Mako, except it also has a fantastic outer bank turn and a turn around that stunning center fountain. Ironically, when I went, the center fountain was not exactly working yet, but what I have seen, it looks incredible. Just another reason to why Candemonium is better than Mako. The airtime is on par with the airtime on Mako, which is why, just by a little, I personally like Candemonium better than Mako. This whole new area called Chocolate Town took up the space of what used to be a golf course, so Hershey Park bought it and it was 100% worth that investment. It created a whole new entrance for the park compared to the way smaller old entrance that was, which it was cute, but I love this area so much more. All of Chocolate Town has this great, fresh vibe to it, not to mention it also is a massive, allowing so much bigger crowds. My first impressions was me just being blown away on how nice the entry area is, especially with right when you walk in, Candemonium just sitting right in front of you. This is overall just a beautiful ride to look at, from the great color scheme and those fantastic trains just colliding along the beautiful B&M track. My personal favorite is the orange train which just looks so good, the whole vibe of this coaster just fits in so well with the park, named of course Hershey Park. The name Candemonium really has grown on a lot of people since they announced it in 2019 and I personally think it's super cool. From now on, this coaster is pretty much the star attraction of the park, it's a huge crowd pleaser even though they already had Sky Rush their other hyper coaster. I personally got to ride Candemonium a total of 7 times, that is 2 in the front, 1 in the middle, and 4 in the back. As you can tell, I definitely did like the back better than the front. Overall, you do get pulled over those great airtime hills more in that back seat. When I went a couple days after it opened, surprisingly the lines were not bad at all, allowing me to get a decent amount of experiences. Earlier in the day, it did have a little bit of a line, but really towards the end of the day, it was really almost a walk-on where I got most of my rides. Some of those were even night rides, and let me tell you, night rides on this thing are absolutely incredible. They are very similar to the Mako night rides you may experience on it. Once you get to the back section of the ride, it just gets to where you can barely see anything. For sure, this coaster gets so much better as it warms up, getting faster and faster. Overall, this coaster is just so good. It surprised me, especially towards the end of the day. I was just blown away on how fantastic of a hyper it was. But let's walk up to this coaster, as obviously there is all of Chocolate Town, but then there is the entry plaza which looks great, mainly that queue and station building. 
Here is where you will notice the theme of the ride, which some of you would have already noticed through the name, but also the candy logos scattered on the outside queue and very much of the station. It is a loose theme, but very modern, and compared to some of the other American parks, I really do love it as you will walk through the queue into that great looking station. As you will notice, there is only 7 rows which may not be the best at first thought, but what it really does is allow for a faster ride experience and also some tighter turns. As I said earlier, go for the back row, that is where the best experience is as you'll be greeted by those world class B&M clamshell restraints. They are known to be the most comfy restraints out there and that is of course the case as you will finally leave the station and climb up that 210 foot tall Till. You will get some great views of the area all around you, especially if you look back, there will be that beautiful Hershey Park skyline. You will crest over the top of that lift hill and dive down that fantastic drop. This one, as good as Mako's, maybe even better depending on who you ask. Following will be the first massive Camelback airtime hill. This one delivers some fantastic lifter airtime as you'll be lifted out of your seat for just what feels like so long. The airtime hills on this coaster are just shaped perfectly to create the best airtime possible and they are done flawlessly. Why Candy's airtime is just so good. You will speed into this great turnaround and into another camelback. This one not as good as the first one but still is an excellent airtime moment. Next is one of in the only speed hill on this coaster and let me tell you I do not care what other people think but this is definitely better than Mako's speed hill. It has some outstanding lifter as it is even bigger than Mako's, a reason why it is even better as you will take a helix up into the one and only Outer Banked Airtime Hill. This was the first and only Outer Bank on a BNM Hyper and in no way to disappoint, you will get some great lifter especially on that back outside seat. It's super unique and one of the highlights of this experience but you will go up into this more average airtime hill, it definitely is not as good because it does have a trim on it. You will take a grand tour around what would have been the center fountain into another great pub of airtime, this one definitely surprised me. And then you will go into the brakes, which not to mention does have one more dip before you hit the actual brake run, but just, you know, a great ending to a fantastic ride. This coaster has a very fulfilling link to it, the elements are placed perfectly, which though the duration may not be the longest, it does feel nice. In my opinion, this is the best B&M Hyper Coaster, which is why, for its overall score, I'll be giving it a 10 out of 10. One of the best coasters in Pennsylvania, as this coaster is just a sweet ride. But what do you think of Candemonium? Make sure to post that in the comments below. I read every comment. Love what you guys have to say. And of course, if you are not already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos on coasters often. And see ya.